Broadcast Network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind-the-scenes exclusives. All thanks to E! Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hello, everybody. You are watching and listening to AfterBuzz TV Spotlight On. I'm Jason Eichler. Before we get started, we want to make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel right down there. And if you're on iTunes or SoundCloud, make sure you rate and subscribe as well. Today, we've got a very special guest in the studio from USA Sirens. Please welcome Kevin Bigley. hey Welcome. How's it Thank going? Thank you. Uh, good. Yeah, good. Good. In so you are... lovely Burbank day. This lovely day in Burbank, <laughs> San Fernando Valley. to San Fernando Valley, the best place mm. to be. Okay, the only place. Before we talk about the show, we're gonna get to know you a little bit more. Okay. So I'm gonna ask you some random questions, and Here you just go. have to say the first thing that pops in your head. Make the best kind of questions. I know. Okay. No pressure. Great. Okay. What's the first movie you remember seeing in theaters? Ha! Ah, um. Uh. I think I cried during. Um, during several movies, uh, 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 I remember uh, uh, definitely Ninja Turtles. Uh, okay, yeah, and that, yeah. that the one, yeah, tears. yeah, the one with Corey Feldman as Donatello. <laughs> definitely that one. Um, I definitely did uh, various forms of uh, improvisational karate in line. I was pretty pumped. Oh wow! Definitely amped, and I cried during that movie. I think uh, Splinter gets hurt, and uh, Raphael's really confused, and uh, I mean, it was definitely an emotional roller coaster in that film. Are you like a loud crier? Or is it just like I think I, I was then at okay. six. <laughs> I was a loud crier at six. I have gone through uh, variations of of, uh, of volumes for my crying. Uh, now I'm more of a silent crier. Okay, just like um, shed a couple of tears. Yeah, I'm a single tear dramatic guy. Yeah, that's that's, that's got that's got more of a powerful effect. I think. I think so. I, I'd like to think so. I'm a powerful crier. <laughs> <laughs> okay, beer, wine, or liquor? Beer. Beer all the way. <laughs> Are you like a beer snob? Uh, fairly actually. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. I beer beer snob ish, but I love to get down on Coors Light. Um, that's usually actually the one that I choose the most. <laughs> really, is Coors Light. So oh. if Coors Light would like <laughs> send to send me way. anything, pallets of Coors Light. Look my at the sponsorship happening. Yeah, right I know. Now. I always try and yeah, you're just welcome pimp for myself that. out. To um, what's forms. your favorite brand of clothing? Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, exactly. Let's just get my cl- fill my closet, my yeah, fridge, there, as you much as possible. Car. <laughs> yeah, Timberland, Timberland. I love Timberland. Yeah, <laughs> need exactly. a Ferrari. Those cars are so good. <laughs> God, wow. Who doesn't want a Ferrari, right? Wow. Okay, what's the last song you downloaded? Oh man, um, I'm also a music snob to a degree. I try and back away from the edge of being totally obscure, but. Um, I think it was a Black Lips album or something. Okay. Yeah. I like a lot of various forms of punk rock. Um, Oh. I'm a punk rock fella. Um, But when we were, like, for instance, I went and took our uh, showrunner to a Black Lips King Con and barbecue show. uh, And he's like, Bob Fisher, he's like 52. And he ended up, I forced him into a mosh pit. (laughs) A mosh pit. So don't throw your showrunner probably into a mosh pit. But I, I chose to. Um, the yeah. next day on set, you just have all these crazy stunts that right, you never yeah. wanted Every, to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was pretty. He was. He was pretty. He had some short sore shoulders uh, that day. But yeah. There you go. Punk, okay. <laughs> some punk where, rock song. Where and who with was your first kiss? Oh, um, a really gross one. I think was in the, uh, uh, in the hall in like seventh seventh grade. Seventh grade. I made sure I did it in the hall in front of everybody. Um, and I didn't really know what to do, so I did like a weird tongue thing because somebody was in the like, hall. "Yeah, he's like, just kind of flip your tongue in there, kind of like you're <laughs> like you're throwing a, throwing a baseball or something." So I kind of just went, la la la, like you know, yeah. nailed it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I was pretty confident. Everybody that was watching the like student body was pretty impressed. So and who was she? Um, <laughs> I think her name was Amanda. 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 Amanda Walker. Oh, man. Maybe Amanda, she's watching this Amanda now. Walker. Yep. I think okay. that was it. Cats or dogs? Oh, dogs. I have a cat, though. I want a pit bull really bad. Um, also a guy who loves who loves a pug dog. Okay. Um, yeah. A pug yeah. is a good dog. Yep, yep. Had one named George growing up. 
There you go. Good we're guy. Learning, we're learning so much. He's a good fella. Yeah. These questions are fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> we are like, like really like hard hitting questions here. Yeah, I know. You came with him. Who watches my show and just goes, oh man. I wonder if he's a pug guy. Now they I know. Bet he now is. they know. <laughs> okay, last time you got pulled over. Oh man, um, you know what? My wife would call me a very s- slow driver. I almost said safe because I like to think I'm safe, but so I don't really get pulled over very often. I think I was like 16. Oh wow! When I got pulled over, yeah. I get For pulled speeding. over like monthly. Oh really? That's yeah, no, I'm very, I'm, I'm too careful. <laughs> okay, and first big purchase you made after being cast on Sirens. I'm a punk rock fan who is very careful. <laughs> <laughs> um, there you go. First purchase. See, I'm just so <laughs> stupid. I'm so boring. This isn't exciting. I bought a bed. Like, uh, everybody else blew it on, like, cars and just blow. Just like, it I moves in a circle. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I bought a bed. <laughs> and I got married. Like, that's, that's like, my That's, thing, like, yeah. the crazy Hollywood life. Yeah, exactly. He likes pug dogs. He bought a bed. He's a married man. Like, yeah, that's... Yeah. Watch out for this hey, one. Look out! He's crazy! I think I bought, like, a hand plane because he woodworking, too. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, very run-of-the-mill. That's a right. woodworking joke as well. He's that kind of guy. Those are, like, those are like dad jokes. <laughs> yeah, I, I do. I mean, I'm wearing a flannel. I have a big heavy... Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. There you dad, go. Dad jokes sort of... Fall. Okay, let's talk about when did you first start getting into acting? Um, I think I was, you know... I mean, I was a kid when I did, like, my first Christmas school play, and I was sick. Um, I played a sick child, so I was very method. <laughs> what at play six was or seven. it? <laughs> I think my teacher wrote it. Oh. <laughs> it's that kind of style. Um, I, I, I think I got into I did, like, a Shakespeare play when I was, like, 14. I okay. loved it and, and then and went for it. And then... Um, but like a lot of people start out like that. So when I got really serious was right right after college. Okay. And you went to college for acting as for well, right? For it, yeah, which was very serious then, of course. Uh, they do very serious work in college um, and exploratory experimental theater. But uh, but yeah, that was good. But then I got I got was started throwing myself more into into my work oh. uh, afterwards. So were your parents, because I know a lot of times if somebody's like, you're going to college for acting, they're like, Okay, that's good, but what are you going to do? <laughs> Fairly. You, yeah. My dad's a cop. And he was kind of okay. like, really? Okay, fine. But he was also kind of like, I bet you you're going to make a ton of money. And I was like, I don't think it works like that. Uh, but um, he, they were very supportive. Uh, very, 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 very supportive. Uh, they hoped that I could one day take care of myself. Oh, and that's good. And maybe worked them. Out, worked out like that for the time being, so we'll see. Do you think, because a lot of people that go into college for acting, it obviously prepares you for how to act, but not necessarily how to work in the entertainment industry. What would yeah. you say is, like, the biggest thing you learned out here that you didn't learn in college? Man, see, now we went from, like, what's now we your got favorite deep. dog yeah. <laughs> to, to that. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know, man. I, I think it doesn't prepare you for the level of competition. It also okay. really doesn't prepare you for, like, the level, this, like, being an actor and then being a professional auditioner is, you know, those are two different things. But one leads to the other, so that's the thing that doesn't really prepare you for, I'd say. And then, yeah, just the the level of competition. I think there's a statistic right now that is like there's never been more entertainers, actors in one city than there's in Los Angeles right now. Oh wow! At any point in history, like <laughs> so, that's scary. <laughs> yeah. So that's the level of competition that you're dealing with. So you just gotta make it out on top, though. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so talk to me. You got cast in a Vince Vaughn pilot. I did. And that yeah. was your first sort of big role? Oh, my first one, yeah. Yep. And yep. then what happened with the pilot? Um, Didn't go. Didn't go. <laughs> yeah, it was like a pilot presentation. And uh, yeah, Vince helped me out big time. Um, and he told me to move. He was like, just move. You know, go out to California. So I listened to him. He was super cool. He, had, he did this one thing I thought was really awesome where he would just kind of, I was so nervous and I was like stumbling over my lines. He would kind of like, between takes, like, take me outside and tell me stories about swingers. <laughs> I'd, be like, I'd be like, where am I? What? Am I having a conversation with Vince Vaughn? And then I could just go back in there. I'd feel all loose and ready to go. It was, it, oh, uh, that's cool. Yeah, he was really, really great. Really good director. How does Vince Vaughn, like, call you and say, hey, you need to move to L.A.? Uh, I think it, he had told me on set several times. He was like, got to do it. You got to do it. You got to do it. And then... Um, he met uh, at like a the a rap party. He, I introduced him to my wife, and and I was like, "Well, I think we're gonna do it." And he gave me two pieces of advice. He was like, "Great, don't compare the cities because Chicago's always gonna win." 
Um, and then uh, to uh, have fun, but uh, you're going to hate your first year in L.A. <laughs> so, oh, that's true. <laughs> and, then, and boy, did I. Uh, so, yeah, it was uh, it was definitely a learning experience, And but he, he helped me out big time. So how long were you in L.A. until you got until you booked your first role? Um, like two months, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah, I did like Detroit 187. Okay. Which was like w w great, you know, because I got to work and I went to Detroit. That was the thing. <laughs> I was like, oh, like, man. Like, I moved to sunny California. Now I'm going to Detroit. I'm going to Detroit. I'm from Detroit, so I know how shitty you it is. You do? Oh, yeah. my God. So I stayed yeah. at the MGM Grand. Oh, okay. Which was like the nicest hotel I've ever stayed in, in my entire life. But it's in Detroit. It's in Detroit. <laughs> I was there, and then everyone told me, like, I went to the concierge for Detroit. <laughs> and they were like, she was like, gave me like an I Am Legend speech. She was like, don't go outside, like, at dark. Like, don't, just don't. Just stay here. <laughs> stay here. And I didn't, like, I only worked three days out of the 14 that I was there. And okay. they weren't the first three, so it was like, so I had a lot of downtime. Oh. So I went, I tried to find a bookstore, and all the bookstores were closed. Yeah, they don't read in Detroit. They don't read in Detroit <laughs> or something. And so I found some university's bookstore, and the only book that I could really find that I could read was Angela's Ashes. <laughs> <laughs> so I sat, I sat in a casino in Detroit. <laughs> I read Angela's friggin' Ashes. I was like, oh, my God. And I would just, like, be like, I would be like, oh. Another baby died, <laughs> and then I like flip the page, and then like look outside, you know. It just, it just looks like death outside, and everybody's closed. And we're like, oh, oh, and another baby died. Like it just got worse and worse and worse. That's gonna be like in your autobiography. Oh, like, it was a snowball of tragedy. When really I almost was. killed myself in it. <laughs> right, you know, Angela's Ashes. Right, really yeah, Angela's Ashes. Nearly, nearly, yeah, made me off myself. That's it. That's pretty close. Well, yeah. you've come so far. Yeah, from we all have from, from Angela's, Angela's Ashes. Ashes. Thank God. Okay, so then you finally got booked. <laughs> in Sirens. Tell me what the audition process was like for the show. Um, fairly normal. I went in and I didn't think I was going to get it. And uh, <laughs> Fairly normal. Uh, fairly normal. <laughs> I was expecting rejection. So positive. <laughs> yeah, probably not going to get this. I can think of a million reasons. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I went in there, auditioned for that. Got a test, um, which was like a rare thing to get like a test with no other actors there, which is cool. But I've not gotten projects even when I was the only person, <laughs> the only option <laughs> in the room. So there's certainly no guarantees. So I ended up, um, Dennis kept bringing me back and bringing me back and bringing me back. And they were just playing with me. Um, yeah. yeah I, <laughs> I thought I offended him one time. Because <laughs> in that, I swear to God, I felt so bad. Because Dennis messes with you, uh -huh. especially when you first get to know him. And um, so he would just bring me back to do a scene and mess with me. And then he would, like, ask me questions about myself. So he was like, do so you like Chicago? Because that's where we'd be shooting. I'm like, I love Chicago. And uh, he was like, why? I was like, well, you know, I was like, I come from an Irish Catholic uh, uh, family, and there's, it's an Irish Catholic kind of city. And I was like, you're Irish, right? <laughs> and he goes, why would you say that to me? And I was like, what? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I was like, oh. Oh, I didn't, I didn't mean, I thought you were Irish. Are you not Irish? I'm pretty sure you're Irish. I thought rescue me. I, you, I thought you were Irish. <laughs> and he was like, don't ever say that to me. And then I got a look from somebody else being like, he's joking. <laughs> you're like, oh, <laughs> like, God. Holy jeez. Like, why would you do that to me? That's in a, scary. In a test. Like, yeah. Yeah, that is, that, that's Dennis' that speed sometimes. Is there, because you improv on the show a little bit, right? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Is that, because you don't come from a comedy background, is that, not does quite, that come natural to not you? Not when you're experimenting with movement in college. In college. You know, that's not quite a co uh, comedy you background. You don't relate that? No, yeah. I'm a comedy nerd. Okay. Um, but, yeah, I, uh, I I love comedy, but um, especially old comedy and old SNLs and all that stuff. But, like, um, yeah, we don't, I mean, if you're an actor that's any good, I think you can usually improv within characters. Yeah. So that's what it is. I can't be like... Can I get a suggestion of a play? You know, like I can't, yeah. I'm not very great in that kind of uh, in that realm. But I can within a, an already established character, I can come up with a few jokes. And, stuff. and you guys get a away with a little bit more because it's on cable. We do, yeah, yeah, exactly. So if you if you say any, yeah, uh, I don't know what what I can get away with here. So we're on the it. internet, so we can, <laughs> we can say anything. Yeah. So I mean, you can. I think specifically, there's only like two words that Dennis hasn't been able to get on the air. Like you F and know? S, right? F and F and C. Oh, you can't say C. C. Oh, bummer. I'm going to start a campaign for that. He loves to say C. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't say it on there. But I can't say because I don't want a million emails. <laughs> that's, <laughs> and that's tweets valid. to me. 
like of how much of a jerk mouth. I am for saying that. Yeah, yeah, but he loves that. He loves how much of what you actually improv makes it onto the show? Quite a bit. Um, if you look at like the second half of the first season, there's a lot. They start using it as a tool. Uh, so after every take we improv, we mm. improv every single take oh, at wow. the end, and they use that, and usually slice it up, and they use it at the ends of the scenes, like they have buttons, yeah. just as, because there's like, when you're doing the scene that you've done a hundred times, and then all of a sudden you get to the improv, if once you find that joke, the energy kind of changes, so they use that as a tool to boost out of the scene into the next one, oh, so okay. it's a really clever device That's that cool. they use in editing, yeah. So. Is it nerve-wracking um, improving along some of those other people on the show? Always nerve-wracking. Yeah, I can imagine. I yeah. always try and come with a few jokes already, but of course, you know, you can't really plan your improv that well. But um, you know, yeah, it's it's kind. Of, but you do it so. I've, oh gosh, I mean, you think like I've done twenty-three episodes with those guys. It's kind of you. There's a a, a rat-a-tat kind of thing. A rat-a-tat, tat. Yeah, rat-a-tat Good back and forth. Tat, tat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, exactly. And you guys do some crazy stuff on the shows, and I was reading that you have to warn your grandma for certain episodes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah not grandma approved. Yeah, 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 for sure. I would just give Grams a heads up, you know? What do you give tell her, her? Give her a call and be like, hey, you know, don't watch this one. You okay. know, like, yeah, there's it's one like... There's one where we, like, interrupt a uh, slumber party. Grandma, tune in. And then there's one with, like, a guy with a bottle in his ass. You know, Grandma, watch something else. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's very like, simple. Close your eyes two minutes in yeah, until hey, five minutes hey, Grams, in. Grams, yeah, you can watch the opening, but then I would I would, I would, would tune to the nightly news or something. You know, uh, I would tune away from guy with bottle in his ass. <laughs> um, yeah, or a horse porn episode, you know? Yeah, that yeah. might yeah. be a little uncomfortable. Yeah, I mean, I don't know you. your grandma. But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. My grandma watches. Yeah. Um, I don't know how proud she is of certain episodes, but, <laughs> but, but proud of the rest, I'd say. So the show is on USA Tuesday nights. Sure. Yep. You're, you've already wrapped up season two of filming. Yeah. We're all done filming. And yeah. so do we don't know if there's a season three yet? Not yet. Not yet. Keep watching people. <laughs> get it. Please to be determined. watch the show. Yeah, exactly. If we get a season three, is there any dream guest star that you'd love to have come on the show? Um, Nick Offerman. Okay. Uh, they're talking about, like, um, they want to do an episode of, like, having my parents. Uh, Nick Offerman would be a great, would be a great dad. Oh, that'd be fun. <laughs> Who would your mom be? I would like Joan Cusack or Bonnie Hunt. Oh, that those, would be those awesome. are good ones. Yeah, two Chicago actors as well. Offerman, also a Chicago actor. Oh. Not based in Chicago anymore, but, yeah, but was. Um, I love that guy. I read that guy's book. I'm also a woodwork, so you you read a lot. Angel's Come on, ashes. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Off. I met Nick Offerman. Once. Oh, really? What, once. What was that like? Well, I did a pilot for Greg Daniels. He did the Office and stuff, and uh, of course Parks and Rec. So I was on the lot, and uh, it didn't go. And I was wanted to say hi to Greg, so I went up, and that's the Parks and Rec offices. And I'm walking by, and then there's Nick Offerman, and he's in his overalls and stuff. <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, and I freaked out. I'm walking by him, and he's just making eye contact with me because I'm just a stranger yeah. in this office, you know. And uh, he just goes like, "Hello, young man." And I was like, oh. <laughs> like <laughs> oh my God. "I think I said like I was so nervous. I was just like, hey, what's up?'" And then he just kept going, yeah. But yeah, Nick Offerman for sure. That would be pretty awesome. That'd be awesome. Okay, okay, so I know you just did an indie film as well. It did called Delinquent. I don't know when that's gonna come out. I think they're gonna try and do the festival stuff. Okay. Um. Yeah. But uh, Kieran Valla, who's an AFI alum, it's really good. Yeah, very gritty. That's but awesome. it's nice to go from, from. Uh, that's why my hair is so short. I just shaved it all off. Oh, American really? History X style. Yeah, exactly. Well, on the show, I have like an enormous pompadour. Yeah. That rivals Elvis Presley. So <laughs> it's just kind of like, it's hard to play like a gritty, a gritty natural, naturally lit like drama that's you know a slow burn with, with like, a poop. giant pompadour. <laughs> yeah. So with a ton of moose in your hair. So I. I shaved it all off. There you go. Shorter the more dramatic, I suppose. That's like your thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is a dr- drama role. I'm yeah. going to shave That's what everything. I learned in theater school. That's what I learned in theater school. Well, now you're using it. Short hair. Is there one TV show on air right now that you'd like to guest star in? Um, I watch Brooklyn Nine-Nine, but I already got on that. I'd say Veep. Veep? Veep's awesome. I really like Veep. Um, God, all of them. Walking Dead. Oh my God, there's so much. And all the there's such good comedy. I think my favorite show on air is Louis. But good oh, luck, that is good. Louis. <laughs> good luck. Um, Keep being yeah. funny. They'll get you in there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, but that I, I love that show so much. It's an amazing show. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming in today, man. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. Um, let us know where we can find more info on you. Oh, media yeah. Handles. Oh, I have a sketch group that I do uh, some sketch stuff with Funny or Die. Um, that's called Big uh, Big Cob. Okay. B-I-G-C-O-B at Funny or Die. Awesome. 
Cool. And Sirens is on USA on Tuesday nights. That's right. There we go. If you guys want more from AfterBuzz, AfterBuzzTV.com and at AfterBuzzTV on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Until next time, we will see you in here. Have fun. Cheers. Cheers. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. Buzz you later. <laughs> The views expressed herein are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.